Learning to code isn't the same anymore, and most people don't understand this. That's the harsh truth. Back in 2020, learning to code meant searching Stack Overflow threads and grinding leak code problems. Ugh, this is sh that was my reality eight years ago when I first became a software engineer. But coding doesn't really look like this anymore. Or this. It looks more like that. Today, we've got AI agents, LLMs, and other tools to help developers learn and build. So I'm going to show you exactly what courses and tools to use to learn how to code today. Okay. No BS and no vague internet advice that you can find anywhere. I'm going to walk you through every step that I'd learn how to code if I could start from scratch again in 2020 in 2026. So let's get into it. First off, the old rulebook doesn't work anymore. Back when I first learned how to code, the instructions were quite simple. Learn the basics of one language, build a full stack app, and learn data structures and algorithms from an Indian man on YouTube. Now, imagine variable as a box and you are keeping your data inside that box. Now, some of those things are still important. Like, you'd still need to know about Python syntax, object-oriented programming, REST principles, authentication, concurrency, and more. But now, you can learn these things alongside coding assistance, and it makes things a lot faster, too. That's the cool and the scary part. Think of it like chemistry. We used to have just the standard elements. Nitrogen, oxygen, iron, and more. Two hydrogens and an oxygen make water. But imagine a brand new element gets discovered. And suddenly, it creates crazy new reactions when it's mixed with old ones. That's what AI is. The old fundamentals still matter. But AI is this brand new element that changes everything when combined with the old school way of learning. So as promised, I'm going to give you real life courses, well, virtual courses, that will give you a leg up. The first one is AI Python for Beginners by Andrew Yang and DeepLearning.ai. He taught millions of people through Coursera, and this new course is designed specifically for beginners who want to learn Python in the context of AI encoding assistance. It's completely free and it's very comprehensive, 10 hours long. And it doesn't just walk you through the Python basics. It also shows you how to combine those fundamentals with AI workflows. That way, you're not just learning Python as a language, you're learning it in a way that developers actually use it today. If you're not a fan of deep learning or the style just isn't for you, then I'd also recommend checking out Udemy's The Complete AI Coding Course. And for bonus points, if you want to gain a deeper understanding of not only the code, but AI itself, I'd highly recommend checking out Harvard CS50 Intro to AI with Python. In my opinion, it's way better than trying to stitch together random tutorials on YouTube all on your own. With courses like this, you'll get both the fundamentals along with working with AI workflows. So you'll get the whole package all at once. Prompt engineering, the classic term that you've heard all over the internet. If I had to start over, this is one of the very first things that I would learn. Prompt engineering is kind of like giving instructions to a really smart teammate. If you give vague, sloppy instructions, they'll waste your time or build the wrong thing. But if you give very clear, guided instructions, you'll get exactly what you want faster and better. See what I mean? Don't be the person that isn't clear about their instructions. Otherwise, it's better not to use AI at all. An easy rule of thumb for making good prompts is the rule of three. You need three things to make a decent prompt. A subject, what you want the AI to focus on, an end result, the format or the outcome that you expect, and then also the context. So give it some background, style, or constraints to guide the answer. For example, let's look at a weak prompt. Write about marketing. That doesn't give the LLM really much to work with. Like, what do you mean marketing? So a strong prompt, which uses the rule of three, would be write a LinkedIn post. That's the subject that explains the importance of customer trust. That's the end result. In a beginner-friendly tone. That's the context. Now, of course, this is a very short prompt still, I would even put more details into that to structure it, but this is a much better prompt than write about marketing. That little bit of structure is the difference between getting a vague answer and something that you can actually use. So the best place to learn all of this is from today's sponsor, Zero to Mastery. Zero to Mastery's prompt engineering bootcamp has full courses with instructional details, homework assignments, progress reports, and more. They also have some other courses I thought were really handy, like an AI engineering bootcamp, building apps using Langchain and LLM APIs or even super useful skills like using AI for Excel or understanding ChatGPT's code interpreter. Immersing yourself with different AI tools and giving yourself exposure to different LLMs is definitely the way to go when you're learning how to code. It just gives you more experience with understanding strengths and weaknesses for different LLMs. That's a superpower in tech interviews, by the way. So if you want to learn more, I've linked their courses in the description below. Feel free to check
check it out. I know what you're thinking. This is my chance to not have to learn data structures and algorithms. I have AI now. Yeah, well, reality check. You still have to learn data structures and algorithms, but you can use AI to help you. This kind of goes back to the whole chemistry thing I mentioned. Remember that a few minutes ago? The old rules still apply to some extent. You won't just have to learn DSA from scratch, though, but you'll still have to learn it. You'll just have an easier time now that you get to use coding assistance. I strongly believe in this crutch because way back when we got the internet, we didn't tell people to just learn things using books. They had to learn with the internet too. That's real progress. The way I'd approach learning DSA is kind of similar to the way that I had done it before. Definitely take a structured course, but make sure to have a coding assistant extension on your IDE or some sort of LLM in your browser. Otherwise, it's kind of like taking a calculus test without a calculator. So here are some of the courses that I'd recommend checking out. Because remember, I said I'm going to give you concrete advice in this video, not just vague internet advice. Definitely check out data structures and algorithms and go. Now, you may have to add the coding assistant piece yourself. I'm not sure if this supports AI help, but with any of these courses that I'm recommending, it's good to get comfortable with using different types of LLMs and agents. If you don't, at bare minimum, at least use ChatGPT. Please use ChatGPT. Then the next step is downloading Claude or starting to at least use Gemini. Just one of these pick any of them. Once you get more advanced, I'd install Augment on VS Code. It's a VS extension and it's pretty cool. It actually indexes your repo and helps you learn. And Cursor does this too. Cursor is just its own IDE. But I'd argue that it does too much for a beginner. So if you're a beginner, don't use these crutches just yet. You need to learn first. So use basic LLMs in the beginning and then build up from there. Don't listen to all the noise about upgrading your LLMs constantly. It might stop you from learning how you're supposed supposed to learn? No, bad. Don't do it. Focus on using the least amount of help first. Like I said, build up once you're not a beginner anymore. Last but not least, ah, uh, system design. The bane of most junior engineers existence. This is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh, get it away from me, man. Now, this is something that's usually reserved for senior engineers, but now it's necessary for all engineers, more than ever, in fact. You see, when you enter the workforce, you'll need higher level skills now because prompting and the use of coding assistance are now just commonplace. It's expected. People will just code faster, which means the most in-demand skill will be understanding systems not syntax. The way that you can get better with system design is actually less of an AI approach and more of the old school teachings. I think system design is not always quite fully baked with LLMs, so that's where you can really shine when it comes to starting over. First, I'd learn how a general system works. Neat Code, as I've said in the past, it has the best high-level videos on this, and they're all on YouTube for free. He goes in-depth on what to look for when designing something, including scaling horizontally or vertically, what a firewall is, the type of auth that you'd use, storage, caching, API management, containerization, and more. Once you actually watch a few of those videos, I'd start playing around with the tools. For example, use Azure or AWS, like you have to do that. You can actually set things up like an API or a web app, a pipeline, a database, all the fun system design stuff. Get used to playing with these tools in the cloud too. And you can even eventually set up AI integrations to build something even cooler. The point is with system design, go back to the basics, play around like they're Legos, watch a few YouTube tutorials, but don't get stuck into tutorials hell. Then go to Azure or AWS and start actually building things. Tinker around with it. That's how engineering works in the first place. So that's pretty much it for this video. If I had to start coding again today, I'd do it differently. The fundamentals still matter. Python, DSA, system design. But now you can learn them with AI by your side. That's the real advantage in 2025. Combining the old fundamentals with new tools. Learn the basics, use AI to accelerate, and focus on building real projects. Because the best developers of tomorrow won't just know syntax. They'll know how to think, prompt, and build with AI. That's exactly how I'd start over. So, good luck.